for coming out. Um, I'm Adam Silver. You're in the right room. Uh, if you, I hope you're in the right room. Uh, so far, uh, like um, Bridget said, this is a quick little caveat. Naps are awesome and real. My nap is usually right about now, so I'll be back in 15 minutes. Okay. <laughs> so, I'm serious. I'm up at 4.30 every morning. Me sleeping in is 5.15 a.m. It's crazy. I have, I have some issues. Don't we all really have issues? So, okay. All right, so um, is this not on? Oh, hold on. on. Here we go. So if you go to adamaslive.com, if you're into social media, by all means go there. It's a preset tweet. I like to do this. It saves you time. It makes me look good. So do that. Okay. If you want to know how I did this, ask me after and we'll have some time after, I'm sure. I have a thousand slides to get through in 35 minutes. Just shy of a thousand. Actually, about 50, maybe. My math is not very good. Um, and the goal of this is like the other Adam, he had a conversation. I want to have a conversation with you as well. I know I talk fast. I have a lot of energy. I get it. It's just how I'm wired. Sorry. And that's that. And I don't drink caffeine after noon, crazy as that may sound. So, um, my goal is to get through the slides, share with you information. It's just beginner level stuff, you'll see. It would actually make sense how they scheduled this after the workshop, the beginner workshop. It might have made more sense, but they didn't think that far ahead. And if you have questions, let me know. If it's too far off track, we'll do it during a Q&A. I like the conversation, I really do. So by no means, don't feel, you, don't, you can interrupt me if you really want to. If it's about Joomla or Drupal, you have to leave. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's this, uh, oh yeah, cool, yeah. So, a couple questions. Who has a website currently? All right. Who doesn't have a website? No shame. I mean, no judgment. It's coming along. Uh, right. So, and I'm not selling from stage, so good luck. Okay. Uh, all right. Who, when, so the people, I'm going to ask somebody, who has a website right now? So, Madame Moselle. I figures you, you're French, I don't know. Comment ça va? Oh, nice. When's the last time you updated your site? Wow, okay, never mind. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. That's good. That's good. It's, you, you updated. Who hasn't updated in a while? So oh, now you're lying. <laughs> so now you're just making this up. And I, um, more than six weeks. Okay, Ad, adding, con adding content. Ooh, so yeah, see, it gets all quiet. I know. Okay, no judgment, honestly. I will put myself out there for you. So my, I have two brands, Concierge WP is my main development agency here in town, well, in Cary. Um, it went down, it didn't go down, I took it down six weeks ago. It's up as of last night because campus this weekend, and I kept saying it has to get back up, has to get back up. So it's up, six weeks, me, and I do this for, for profession, right? It's not the best situation. So the question is, when did you last update your site? Something to think about. The reason I ask that is just to kind of get a feeling. So some of you tell the truth, some of you lie. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> the old. So the old way we did websites was static HTML. Who has done this for more than 15 years? Okay, so not a ton of people, which, which it's good, you know. Things change, so old static HTML, very, every page was individually coded. That's how I used to do sites. Dreamweaver before that, PageMill before that, Cold Fusion, not Cold Fusion, uh, Web Fusion objects, it's just, I've been doing this for a long time. We had tables and frames, and we still have tables and frames, which is kind of sad, but it's out there, okay. Um, beyond that, and here's a sample of some sites. I did not create these. These are samples. Okay, here's one. Okay, this was a site. And, I, and the point is, this is what site looked like in the old days. In the old days, really, were only at this point. Well, what, WordPress is how old? Anyone know? It's not 2000. It's, that's really old. That's like that's like the, that's the Old Testament word WordPress. But he said the 2000 as far as a year. Do you know when it started? Not 2005. Close. It's 15 this year. So, yeah, oh, so not quite, not, not, not a little, little younger than that. So it'd be so three years less. So 15 years old this year, which is, it means that's a lot, right? I mean, it's been 15 years. How many people have been using it since it first came out in this room? Didn't think so. Oh, one. Really? Wow. Well, here you go. <laughs> I started using it in 2009, uh, either late 2009, early 2010. I don't remember exactly because I'm awake a lot. So, uh, and I dated Joomla for a week. Okay. Here's another site. <laughs> no. oh, See? Right? right? Let's do a quick little, um, I'm going to take a quick little uh, trivia question. What was the first web browser? Uh, no, close. Not AOL, that's a service. Before Netscape. No, that's way old. That's way newer. Mozilla, no. You guys are close. Netscape's, the, like, Netscape's what it became. I'm going to say it, you're going to be like, oh. It was called? Mosaic. Oh, right. right. And I remember seeing Mosaic. I was in college. Did you say it? I'm so sorry. My bad. 
Here, you get this now. <laughs> so Mosaic was the first browser. Before that browser existed, it was actually, it was all graphic. I mean, it was all text-based, called Lynx. Um, I was, was VMS, VBS systems back in college, that's what I ran, Unix systems. Before that, it was bulletin board systems. But no, Mosaic was the first one out of the University of Illinois in Champaign, uh, Urbana, uh, which became Netscape, which was Mark Andreessen, right? That's the history of, the quick history of browsers. And that's, then we had Ask Jeeves, we had all these other just random before Google. There was a life before Google, it's crazy. Before Google, there was the Encyclopedia Britannica. Remember? <laughs> Just saying. And before, you know, and, and my parents didn't want to spend that kind of money for some reason. So we had Funk and Wagnalls. Uh, Wagners? Funk and Wagners? Wagnall. Wagnall? Yeah. My yeah. mother sold them so we could get them. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. And then also, I think there was a shopping center, there was a supermarket that at one point had like a spinoff of one of them where you can get groceries and buy that volume for that month. You know, it took like two years to get your whole set. I want to learn about vivisection. I have to wait two years? Okay. All right. I don't know where that came from. I'm sorry. <laughs> so the new, what we have now is new. We now know we use a CMS, database driven. CMS standing for? Awesome. This is awesome. So I teach a class, WordPress 101 stuff and essentials online. This is so cool. Okay. All right. Um, ah, sorry. What happened there? That was bizarre. Play. Broke my own thing. All right. Obviously, now with the CMS, it's optimized for speed. Static pages have to load each page individually. CMS loads the cell, if you will, the table of what it needs when it needs it. Much faster, right? Okay. And it's easily updated and maintained. Well, maybe, maybe not. Easy is, you know, relatively speaking, easier in one aspect. Uh, I do have a big whiteboard. I'm not going to go on that. But, you know, with, if you want to update the copyright on an old site, and you have 50 pages, you have to update it how many times? 50 times. You want to update it on WordPress, you update it in one place and it updates across the board. So it's easily updated that way and maintained. Things, of course, change. Hackers suck. Um, anyone here directly from Russia? <laughs> so no, then, no, then by all means, I love your people. <laughs> Dos vidania. Actually, I'm half Russian and half Polish. I'll leave it at that. So yeah, Zidobli uh Akshamash. -huh. That's all I I know enough. Huh? Code of conduct, sir. Code of conduct. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. So now, obviously, we have the new sites. We have the old sites. What they look like. New sites are much nicer. This is the Swedish site. Shite? I don't know where I came from. Um, we have a site called Can You Start Yesterday? It's for people looking for work. Uh, it's a cool little site. It's one of mine. I just like the way it looks. Um, and we have, obviously, WRAL Tech. The Tech Wire is a WordPress site. So those, you know, these are all WordPress sites. And they're clean. You know, Apple's site design is clean, not WordPress. Uh, Tribune uh, Broadcasting, uh, KTLA, Los Angeles, where I just moved from eight months ago, uh, is WordPress VIP. Tons of sites. So as we know, 30% of the market is WordPress, 90 million Word WordPress websites. How many people here run an, a business in WordPress, an agency, if you will, building sites for other people? Okay. I'm going to ask you. I'm going to ask um, you, sir, in the back. Right there. You. This guy. You got me? Okay. Right there. Okay. Are you concerned about competition? Why? The 90 million websites. How many sites can you handle? <laughs> I mean, seriously. So I want, you, I want to, I want to um, challenge you to not worry about it. People in here are your colleagues. You can't handle it because you don't have a specialty in e-commerce or learning management system, Lifter, or Shopify, even whatever, not Shopify, terrible example. Um, it's anything, you can resource it out. You can sub it out and know confidently that someone can do it. Work from a place of abundance, not scarcity. Okay. I know this from, because I used to be that guy. It's like, oh my gosh, why is Sally getting all, the I was a photographer before I was in WordPress. I came in that, that, that way. And I would always like, I, I won't, I'll tell you the truth. I s may have had a Yahoo account at one point, email. I might have emailed other photographers to get their pricing. I call it recon. It may not have been my name, just saying. So it's, it's a waste of energy to say, why is Joe getting work and I'm not? Befriend Joe. Learn from Joe if he knows more than you. Sub work, work for Joe if you need to to get experience, right? Build a community about it. That's why I'm here, for one. Okay. So 90 million websites. You know, there's plenty of work if you want to work at getting it. I just did a keynote talk at WordCamp Greenville, one of the camps I went to this year, and uh, about my entrepreneurial journey. It's on WordPress TV. It's, a it's work. What we do, we like, but it takes time. You have to work at it every day. Okay. So uh, anyway, I don't know why that, that tangent came up, but it did. Moving on. Why does this keep turning off? All right. What's next? All right, so some stats. I want to show some stats with you. 
because we're going to get to what is the proper care, feeding, maintenance, all that stuff. We'll get to that in a second. So 86% of the US population um, uh, is on the internet. I wanted to actually fix this real quick. I can't see something here. Okay. So we are not the largest nation by any stretch of using the internet. We're on 86%. There are companies, uh, companies, there are countries that actually use more than we do. We also don't have the best Wi-Fi or cellular networks either, right? It's about what? About money. So there's that as well. All right, 40% of global users use, uh, 1 billion people have bought products online. Okay, so a billion people buy products. I mean, have, how many people are gonna keep their Amazon Prime account when it goes up to 120? <laughs> Everyone's like, yeah, me too. So quick, quick little side note, I just got an email last week um, that my student membership, my, my student account is gonna end because it's been four years. So they assume, A, I was in school. <laughs> I'm sorry. B, I graduated. Also funny, really, actually, think about it. It took me five years. I went to San Diego State University. Um, but I applied as an educator. So if you're a student, if you have an EDU account, you can get half off of Amazon Prime. But apparently only for four years. My complaint to them was, what, I'm a teacher. I, I got it as a teacher for the Redondo Beach Unified School District. Students finish. Teachers, oh, I'm done? I'm good. I'm done. I'm retired. I'm not, no, I'm not. So I tried to complain, and they didn't. It took, I actually saved the entire chat log with Amazon support. Clearly not in this country, not in Russia, but not in this country. And they kept, let me review the notes, see what we can do for you, Mr. Silver. Great. 45 minutes later, yeah, we can't do anything for you. You're, you've done four years teaching or studenting, <laughs> you're done. So now my price will go up to $100 or 120 depends on when it renews for me. I'll do it for the first year, we'll see what happens, I don't know. So, all right, so people buy a lot of stuff online. And isn't it easier to buy online, like just less of a, of a moment, like, okay, you know what, you go to a store, to buy something, it's like it hits you harder versus click a button, have it delivered. Oh, it's like you didn't really buy it, it just showed up. That's why I tell my wife, I don't know how I got this laptop. <laughs> just came to the house. Okay, oh, oh, sorry, one more time. I think I'll stop using that, I don't know. All right, 65% um, of use of web now is on mobile, 65%. We're not quite 100, you know, there are still my, my parents, <laughs> so my dad has a flip phone. Bless his heart. Every time I see him, every three to four months back in LA, can you delete all the voicemails? <laughs> the best thing was this. Here's the best thing. My, I literally uh, came here eight months ago. Um, I was driving and he left me a voicemail. He's like, I'm not sure you're getting voicemails, you know, in Tennessee. Really? Voicemail works everywhere, Dad. So, he's 87, love him. He's a great guy. He's a lawyer, still practices law. All right. Um, Local stats, 85% of consumers use the internet to find a business. How do we use to find businesses? What was that book called? Yellow, Yellow Pages. <laughs> How many people have no idea what that means? <laughs> yeah. yeah, they're all like, uh, actually, is anyone, in, is anyone in here under 18? Huh, okay, under 20? Wow, well, okay, that's what I'm not gonna ask anymore. <laughs> we got one on our driveway last week. I live in Cary, also known as Containment Area Relocated Yankees. I know, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. <laughs> wow. Mm. So you, she said, can't afford Raleigh yet as an acronym. Not, if you're from California, come on. <laughs> <laughs> the down payment on a house in my neighborhood in Redondo Beach is a house here. So just saying, yeah, it's crazy. My, I mean, literally the neighbor next to me, I just went to the market last week. Uh, I saw it online. Uh, 2,400 square feet, two on a lot, so no land. Your, your backyard is from that wall to me, from this wall to you. That's your backyard. $1.2 million. And property taxes at 1.5%. So welcome to California. Why don't I live there anymore? Because it sucked. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Actually, I mean, I miss, the only thing I miss about California is knowing where I was all the time, north, south, east, west. Sunsets to the west, oceans to the west. Here, I'm like, I don't know where I am. And it's all green here. Like, all these trees? Very bizarre, all right. It, it does, but it's just, <laughs> but, you, but you can't see it, and all these trees. <laughs> right, right, right. 35% <laughs> of people read reviews to make purchasing decisions. 65% of web users are on mobile. Okay, and that, that's, so those are some local stats. Keep in mind the local stats. They fluctuate, they change. It based also on what exact you're selling, what you're doing online. It's not exactly a perfect science. It does fluctuate, and often does, you know. Even the 30% of market share, people say it's, it's, it's actually lower. How many of those count as far as multi-sites versus you know, single sites? Anyone, know what, anyone not know what multi-site is? Multi-site, multi-site going once? Okay, multi 
pass? What's multi-pass? That's a trivia question. Nice. Okay. We'll talk about that later. I love that movie. Okay. As long as it, it, local to any to any any local locality. These are actually for, oh there's, uh, oh it's not on this one. I will I will share the slides uh, and I'll put the resource on there after. Yeah. Yeah. They're they're local. They're not a locality of this area. Um, they're local to locality. Right. Yeah. If that makes sense. It's kind of meta. All right. So what is the proper care feeding of, a, of your website? So you have a couple areas here: design and functionality, content, and engagement. Okay. And all these get broken out into subsections. And again, I'll share these slides with you. They're only five dollars. I'm kidding. All right. So design and functionality. We have mobile ready. You have to be mobile ready. As we know, Google dings you negatively if you're not mobile ready. Who has a site right now not mobile ready? Who doesn't want to tell me they have a site right now that's not mobile ready? That's not mobile ready? Well, I've got a lot. Okay, you need to fix that. If it's important to you to be ranked, it's not important. Of course not, because it's not mobile ready. Okay, that's fine. So you need to be mobile ready um, since I think it was April 21st, 2015 is when that went to effect. Actually, I know the date by heart because it's in my brain. I don't know. SEO is important, all right? SEO stands for? Awesome, just making sure. Just, uh, I don't want to assume. I'm not here to, you know, no, I don't know. I'm not here, I don't know. Uh, SEO, can it be done? Yes, is it done well? Sure. It's a moving target at best, in my opinion. There are people who do a great job of it. I do not. I don't even offer it to my clients. Um, I have a person I could sub out to, because I trust them, uh, but I don't do it. In my mind, it's still about this. Adding content to your site that's relevant to your industry consistently, okay? That's the key. Beyond that, yes, there's keywords, there's tags, there's other ways to do it. There's Yoast SEO, there's all-in-one SEO, et cetera, et cetera. So, and then e-commerce, the design, the functionality. Is, does your site need e-commerce? Does it need something else? Does it need uh, learning management? So the functionality and design are important. Mobile ready would be number one. You have to be mobile ready. SEO is number two. And then what's the function of your site that you really need? Here's the kicker. I mentioned earlier that I came into WordPress as a photographer. Um, I built a site. A short version is I had a great job opportunity, got laid off, short, short in the stick, relaunched my photography business back in Los Angeles. Built a new site. Old site was in Flash. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was such a bad Flash site that it had the <sighs> <sighs> Yeah. I'm just embarrassed even to say that now. All right. Um, so I rebuilt it in WordPress. And the reason I chose WordPress over the week of Joomla <laughs> was because I kept seeing like, you know, other photographer websites, looking at the code, and the common theme was WordPress in the back end, the WP. I'm like, okay. Then I started Googling WordPress websites for photographers. And there's, there were tons of them. That's when there were sites that said the top 10 sites, the top 20 things, all these different themes. So I did what everyone else would do is the smart thing I thought. I found a photographer across the country, Florida, who I liked the site, saw his theme. I'm like, I'm using that theme. And I pretty much used the, I bought the theme. And I kind of took his layout, he, a, and we did different types of photography. He did um, lifestyle, I did uh, people, portraits, weddings, um, babies, babies and bellies, uh, and then I did corporate stuff. Um, and the theme I used was, oh yeah, that's right, <laughs> the theme was Headway. Anyone here have Headway experience? <laughs> hey, hey! <laughs> so Headway was awesome when it came out. It was, one of, it was one of the first page builders. You drag and drop blocks. It was brilliant. Slow, but brilliant. Um, and then they got better, and then they kind of dropped the ball. Uh, and I know Grant, I know Clay, um, it is what it is. So now I'm actually, I've switched. Now, I never thought I would ever leave. You know, that's the thing. You have to be open to the fact that things change. So um, I have no, oh, functionality. My site needed, oh, I built the site. Um, and I said, great, I have a website. I'm a photographer. Hire me. Like this room. Crickets. <laughs> you know, um, because the website is not the end all, right? The website is a piece of what your business is. Right. So keep that in mind. Oh, Sorry. well, you know, <laughs> Woo, I thought that was me. <laughs> Woo, all right. <laughs> well, I thought that was enough. I was like, I'll leave it. All right, content. You have to feed the site. You can't just have a site and be done. I'm sorry, am I done? Oh, okay. I thought you were saying, okay. <laughs> all right. Um, fresh, you want know, to keep fresh content for the SEO aspect. Keep, it, keep, keep people coming back to your site. Which format? This is key. So some of you may know that I have a podcast. I have two podcasts, actually. I don't like to write. Not that I don't know how, <laughs> just keep that in mind. I just prefer to speak. So I have a podcast about WordPress. I have two podcasts about WordPress. One of them is over at kitchensinkwp.com. The other one is at Get Options Podcast. Kitchen Sink is my format of my blogging, my content. I, I mean, the podcast. I podcast every Monday comes out. Episode 218 will be out two days from today. It's a Q&A episode. So every Monday for 218 weeks in a row. I have not missed a show yet. 
Um, Get Options, we're at episode 50. It's a co-hosted show. How many people from the East Coast here remember Click and Clack, the Car Brothers? Oh, yeah. um, so it's a, it's, a, it's a riff of that. The way I explain it is um, my friend Kyle and I, uh, it's called Get Options. Anyone know the reference to get op underscore option in the code? So, OK, so let me back up. Kitchen Sink WP, why is that the reference to WordPress? Who remembers Kitchen Sink? See, that's the problem. Dang it. Yes, so Matt Mullenweg, anyone know who Matt is? Okay, good, finally. Okay, so Matt's a friend of mine, and he didn't realize this until I just talked to him in Miami. So back in the day, uh, so four years ago, yeah, a little over four years ago, in the editor, the tiny MC editor, there was a button that says, now it says more, but the tooltip used to say kitchen sink. It used to pop down, you get some more options, right? That's what I named my, my entire brand over. A month later, it's gone. <laughs> so I kept it. So there's actually a plug in a friend wrote to me as a, as a gift, it's in the repo somewhere that brings that tooltip back. That's all it does. It's just it's silly. Um, so my format is podcasting. Plain and simple. Oh, get options podcast. Get option is a piece of codex. Also, it's a it's a query. Get underscore option. We give advice. You give us a question. We give you options. Not all good options. Um, based on the car brother, car the click and clack. If you say I work from home, how do I say motivated? I might answer drugs. Okay. So not the best option, but it's an option. Okay. And then we give you better options. So by all means, we, we love questions for that show. So go online, getoptionspodcast.com. Okay. Um, and that's episode 50. Not as consistent only because Kyle is a slacker. No. Um, he's not here, so I can say that. He has a baby. That's why. All right. Uh, relevant. Again, it has to be relevant to your audience. Uh, don't try to be everything to everybody. Find your audience. Find your tribe. Do that. Do that well. And I believe your content needs to be actionable. I really do. Um, if it's just information that's just general, everyone's general. The more you can niche down and figure out who it is you're talking to and make their content actionable, here's something you want to do for your business or buy something, great. People take action on that. Okay. That's the content. Customer engagement. Social media, owning, renting, and tools. So social media. Who here has social media accounts? Hmm. Okay, how's that working out for you? Okay, I'm kidding. How's your privacy now? So, um, social media is an outpost. You do not own that engagement. Back in the day, we all wanted likes on posts and tweets and whatnot, right? That's fantastic. I would rather have five people's email addresses versus a thousand likes on a Facebook post, right? Five likes. I mean, I want five email addresses because now I own that engagement. I have permission to market to you, okay? They're outposts. Use the outpost to get people to come back to your website. As long as your website's mobile ready. Sorry, I couldn't resist. Um, it's that simple, OK? Because at any given moment, and this happens a lot, things change. Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Snapchat, Periscope. Is Periscope still a thing? I don't know. Um, they, they can change it. And if you have 1,000 or ten, or uh, Instagram, they change the policy. You don't know who those people you, you may have 10,000 followers. Excuse me. And they shut you down for whatever reason. You, you can't contact those 10,000 people. So get people to come back with good content, with a form. We'll get to that in a second. And then tools. I have tools in here, but I don't remember why. Uh, hold on a second. No, I don't know. Tools. Use the right tools. That's what it is. Use the right tools for the service itself. Um, yeah, that's all you got on that one. Okay. So, oh, that's why. Tools are supposed to be the next. My mistake. Sorry. Tools and services. Growth. This is key. So this is what's changed for me most recently in my business as running an agency. Definition between an agency and a freelancer is what? Oh, one gets paid. Wow. <laughs> Bitter? <laughs> wow, that's deep. I, can someone tweet that? That's actually pretty, no, no. I, I don't. There's not one answer. Again, WordPress definition is it depends, right? I believe that the difference between freelancer as agency is. Um, so I left a day job 19 months ago to, to take Concierge WP full time, and I thought I was going to be a freelancer, just do some maintenance, some fixes, some basic sites. That's right, basic sites. I'm all of a sudden southern again. All right, all right. That's all I can do from him, Matthew McConaughey. Um, take the shirt. Um, I took more work than I can handle, which is a good problem to have. So I've hired people. That's the defi definition of an agency. More work than you can do yourself once you have people working for you, freelance or employee, you're an agency. Deal with it. And it sucks. No, I'm kidding, it doesn't. It's great. It's just now you become busier in a different way. Okay? And you, but you can scale, right? So now you have a staff. You have to make sure you have people you can trust. Right? You have to make relationships. So work camp's great for. Conference is awesome. What made the difference for me was I took it full time, thought, okay, great, I'm focused, I have clients, I'm, I'm working pretty well here, things are growing. 
but it wasn't really growing. I was really, really honest with myself. I realized for the first seven or eight months of the last 19 months, I was doing a terrible job. I was doing what's called a shotgun approach to sales. So here's the thing, I can build or I can sell. I'd rather right now sell. I like this piece of a better. I like to strategize with clients, figure out what they need, what it is they want the call to action to be on the website, right? So that's the case, and I need someone else who can build for me consistently, well-priced, et cetera. So I have three developers. One guy who does some basic builds for me in Manila, fantastic gentleman, very affordable, not $5 a day. He's human, okay? <laughs> the, the, the people say, oh, you get someone for $5 a day. No, you don't. You get what you pay for, okay? Right. And I have two developers in country, uh, so I can do what Daryl does. Not a problem. I just don't really want to. Um, I cannot do what Mike and what um, hmm, Scott, whew, that sucks, what Scott do. They're really smarter than me. They know much more PHP than I do. Uh, well, they just know PHP. Let me rephrase that. Um, you know, Braintree, they know APIs. I just, could I learn it? Sure. Do I want to? Kinda. Is it worth my time? No. Not at all. So know where your strengths are. Okay. All that said, my shotgun approach to sales, if you will, was let's say I would email you. What's your name? Hey, Bruce. I have a, a brother-in-law. I, like, I don't like him. So you're, no, I'm kidding. So I would email and say, hey, dear Bruce, we met here. Um, I think I can help you with the website. I would BCC that to my Trello board. Anyone know what Trello is? Trello is like a, a project tool, management tool. I would BCC it to that email address and then do nothing at all. Just wait for you to call me. As I do this 50 times a week, just email and hopefully, and one in 20 would call me back or email me back, but no cold, cold, cold warm, just depended, you know, and no follow up. Terrible way to run a business, okay. So what I did was I actually put things in place. I asked three friends, saw what they were doing. Again, 90 million websites, plenty of us doing the same thing, plenty of business out there. Look to who's doing it better than you. Copy them. It's flattering to some extent. Don't steal their content. I, mean, I found this out the hard. No, I'm kidding. Okay. <laughs> I added a CRM. The growth to your business is knowing where things are. Having a CRM. I just told the story at lunch. I tested three CRMs because I asked three friends of mine. I said, what are you using? What are you using? What are you using? Because all three of them were doing better than me. One of them is actually Scott. He's one of my developers now. He has his own agency, but he subs out to me for some stuff. And I pay him a lot of money because he's really good. But the client we do the work for pays me a lot of money. So it works out well. So I tested three CRMs. And we'll talk about that if you guys want at the end. You want to know the names of them? Okay, of course you do. I'm oh, sorry. So that's going to cost you. No. Um, so I tested HubSpot, uh, Agile CRM, and Pipedrive. Which one did I go with? Hmm. Jamie knows. Pipe drive. I'll tell you why. So HubSpot, so I didn't just sign up for the trial and just like kind of try. I really tried using them. I used them sequentially, not at the same time. I did one for three weeks, three weeks. I did the trials. Started with HubSpot. It's free. There's a free, a free level. Great. Has email integration. Great. The minute you want more features, which I kind of wanted, the price goes up. Pretty darn steep. From where I'm at with my business, didn't make all that much sense at the, at the time. I went to Agile CRM, which was fantastic. My friend Jennifer Bourne uses that. She loves it, but it has a wiki. It has help, uh, help and it has all, it's too much that I needed. What I liked about it was it also had uh, email integration at a lower, at a price point, I think. Um, but it had email sequences that you could tag things. So if you open the email based on what you did to it or clicked on it, it would send you the next sequence of emails. Automated, which is fine if you're doing something that makes sense to be automated. I believe in doing sales, you want to have a personal touch, a little bit more. You may want to have, so I'll tell you so what I did with Pipedrive. So, so I didn't, it was too much for what I needed. Pipedrive is what actually Scott uses, uh, and I loved it. And I liked, it's, it looks like Trello in a sense. It has these boards. You have different pipelines for different projects. You can value everything. It's a CRM. No email integration for the low level. You have to pay, I paid 20 bucks a month. Totally worth it. Okay. Um, and I created five templates, five, a five email template sequence. So, but I make them manual. Like I actually log, I, I look at it multiple times a day, I start in the morning. And based on what has to happen, I'll send you email number one, two, three. So I move them across the board, but um, I send it out. So that way if I did meet somebody at a conference or somewhere else or at a meeting or at a dinner party, whatever it may I can say, hey Bruce, it was great meeting you here. But you, so it's not just completely cold, dear, whatever, you know, <laughs> site owner. I, I make it a little more personal or I can change out some stuff. But the five emails are pre-written. So I don't have to recreate the wheel. That's the key. Systemize certain things that you can. You want to systemize what you can. And, so, huh? Yes, that's the key also. I never reminded myself on, on the old way with uh, Trello to do anything. So it says, I'll, I'll send something off. It says, it, there's um, yellow, green, red. So yellow is 
No actions attached. What's the next action? So right when you're done sending an email, give yourself an action. Send an email, make a phone call, do something, and give yourself a date. So then it reminds you when it gets to that date to do whatever next, right? So yellow is no action. Green is that's today. Red is you missed the date, <laughs> right? So pretty cool. Um, if I, have, I can show you guys a little later if, I want, if you want, but pipe drive. There's a free demo. Um, and I think, not a sales pitch here. I want to make sure I'm clear on that. If you do lose, there's a, I think if you share, if you reach out to me, I have a link that gives you like a, a month or three weeks instead of like the five days they give you. It's like I, found a, I found a link online that gave me a longer trial period. So just FYI. It's out there. It's like, like the truth, like X-Files. Okay. Um, growth tools and services. Um, I don't want to actually, is this one? Uh, oh yeah, that's right. So the CRM, this is the stats in the CRMs. How would people use them for? To capture signal, uh, capture tools, configuration for price quotes, use tools for new leads, proposals. The other thing I did is, um, oops, go back. All right, so email services. Email, email marketing still works. So in with Pipedrive, I do my emails. Um, I wanted to mention, oh, I also use Calendly. Huge help. Pipedrive, first and foremost, you can see when people open the email, you can see people click links. You, you can kind of you know, stalk them if you want. I also use Calendly, C-A-L-E-N dot D-Y. It's a way for people to schedule appointments with me, okay? Um, I just installed that this week and I love it. It's brilliant. It's, instead of going back and forth, what works for you. Here's my schedule for this next two weeks. Calendly. C-A-L-E-N-D dot L-Y. That's what it is. Calend dot Lee. L-Y. Yeah. Yeah. So it's brilliant. It's, and there's, it's a, there's a free level. The free level lets you only have one kind of meeting style, like either 15 minutes. You can't have multiples, but start with free. The goal here is to save some money, start with free. Pay and invest in services you're going to use. Okay. Email marketing. It does work, okay? Plain and simple. But you need permission. Again, get people to give you the email address. So how do you do that? You need an opt-in. I use Optin Monster. How many people have heard of Optin Monster? How many people have never heard of Optin Monster? Oh, okay, so Optin Monster is awesome. Um, it does pop-ups, but it does them in the right way, not in totally intrusive. Um, Syed Balki, he's out of Florida. He's done very well for himself. He's taller than me, which I hate. Um, and like half my age, also don't like. So. Um, the lead magnet concept is basic. I get your email address, what do you get? What, if, if I get your email address, what do you want? You want the top you know, ways to convert subscribers. You want something of value to your industry. If you're a, and the, here's the thing. You, as a photographer, I might have at one point said, here are the top 10 things to, for your settings for your camera or to shoot at certain light. I give you the tips, give it away. Because you know what? At the end of the day, they're gonna still want to hire you. They're not gonna wanna do it. They think they do, but they don't. People, don't, people think they want to do everything themselves. I want to build a book uh, shelving unit in my garage. I really do. I've been in my house for eight months. I don't have a book, I don't have a shelf yet. yet. I could buy one or I can buy some wood. Yeah, so, all right. <laughs> Same thing, another way, uh, a, a launch checklist. Give something away to get the email address. Now you have permission to market to them. I use Aweber, there's Aweber, there's ConvertKit. Um, MailChimp is free, start with MailChimp if you want to start with MailChimp for free, um, by all means. Anyone here using Constant Contact? Anyone here like Constant Contact? No, I'm, I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's the granddaddy of the email services. It's gotten way better. I used to live in it for an old company I worked for. I hated it back then because it was really bad. It's gotten much better, but I still think there's issues with it. So, you know, and, and they, they actually played catch up because of uh, Aweber and Drip and ConvertKit and LeadPage and all these other services came out to kind of kick its butt, so they had to step up. So, they're a good company, they're fine. But MailChimp is usually where a lot of people start. There's up to 2,000 subscribers, completely free. Okay. I, I, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Um, another tool is Exit Intent. So Optin Monster. So Optin Monster will give you a pop-up that gives you you give me an email address. It goes to your your email provider, um, and then it gives you the double confirmation. Here's your here's your PDF. Here's your download. Right. Exit Intent. People leave your site before they leave. You can do hey, do you want something? Here you go. It's not a bad way to go. It's not intrusive, they're leaving you anyways. Can't hurt to ask, right? All right. It's, opt it's still part of Optin Monster. That's called Exit Intent. It's one of the features of, so Optin Monster, we go back. So Optin Monster does pop-ups, uh, banners that come down, pop-ups that go on the side, bottom, and they also do what's called Exit Intent. So when someone's leaving your site, exit, E-X-I-T, like exiting your site, exiting the house. Like I try to tell my kids all the day, every day, get out, exit the house. Exit I intent. Have a yes. I know this is really popular, but I never ever click on it. It annoys the crap out of me. You are, I'm just wondering if I'm the only one. 
You're not the only one, but you're a small minor, you're a small percentage of people. You are, yeah. You're not the only one. I'm the exception to the rule. <laughs> Oh, probably not. Right. It works. Exit intent works. They have the stats to prove it. Right. It, right. And then lastly, this is what I'm actually working on now and testing this, um, abandoned carts. So there are, uh, huh? Yeah. So abandoned carts, 85% uh, like of people who put something in the shopping cart leave, right? So there are services now to get people to come back. And there's ways to do it. I'm actually testing a, a service right now. Um, the minute you put in your name or your email address on, on that shopping cart, like you add the thing and it says, which, what's your email address? It pops up right there, it can. It captures it in Ajax, puts it into the database, a third party service. And then if you exit, that service knows. And maybe three hours later you get an email. Hey, you forgot this. A day later you get an email. Hey, do you want this again? We still have this for you, it's waiting for you. Day four, here's a coupon for 20% off. It captures, you know, and if you have a high enough product, it will capture, it's worth it. If, you have, if you're selling something for $10, not so much. If you're selling something for 100 bucks to give away 10, it's worth it. It was a lost sale anyways, right? Yes, ma'am. Um, going to what that lady said, uh, all the bulk mail, mm -hmm. they only get 5% response. But they and actually, if someone bugs me the way that I leave, because in my mind, they're going to do exactly what you said. They're going to keep bugging me if I give them any information at all. So I leave something. And I think statistically, I'm probably, um, I am also loyal. <laughs> yeah. So if somebody does get me and treat me right, I stay there. But it, if they market I, and market and market. I think it comes down know. to, I think it comes down to the approach of what they're, of what they're selling and, and how they're doing it. You know, there's an integrity issue. There's a, there's an aggressive issue, not aggressive, right? And how bad you want it to. Right. Because sometimes if I want it really bad, I know they're going to send me a lot of emails. Right. right. But I want that freebie really bad, so I don't care. Right. So. Right. So I'm using a service right now called Jilt, um, just as J-I-L-T. It's really cool. There's no money um, unless you hit so many, that's free, unless you hit so many um, recovered sends out. Like you get 25 a month for free. So if I have five people who add something to the cart um, and then they leave and then only f and five sequences go out, so, so five emails. It might be 15 emails, but only five instances go out technically. That's five against my 25, still free. After Jilt just for WooCommerce? No. It's WordPress, WooCommerce, and Shopify. Yeah. All three now, yes. So it's pretty cool. So it's platform agnostic in that case. It doesn't, it's not even on your WordPress, so you actually have a plugin that's about it that connects. Yes. OptiMonster. So Jilt is shopping cart recovery. Yes. All right. So those are the things overall that you need to do. You know, it's, you have a website, great. I have my photography site, fantastic. Got me no business until I got back out there and added content, added my blog. And my old photography site, and here's the kicker. If you're not gonna blog, then pick the right thing. Pick the podcast, do videos, do tr whatever it is you're gonna do for your site to get more uh, action, to get some more in interaction and response, that's what you need to do. Um, I was such a lazy updater of my blog, of my photography website that I actually made my blog dead last. Because if you go to a website, let's say you're getting married, you're looking for a wedding photographer, and normally photographers, made the landing page was their blog with photos. If you saw nothing updated for six months, would you hire that photographer? Not so much. Doesn't mean I wasn't working. I was working a lot. I just didn't take the time to update my website. So I had, I had a, I didn't even have weddings on that site. So I was doing uh, corporate photography, headshots. So I, I made my, my first pages were what I wanted people to focus on. My blog was dead last until the whole site got hacked, it was awesome. I honestly let it happen, I let it on purpose not update, I was curious how somebody might hack into it, because um, I wasn't doing photography anymore. So it got hacked about two years ago and they did it through a plugin, it was pretty interesting. Yeah, case study. Leave you with a quote, there are risks and costs to action, but there are far less than the long risks, uh, range risks of inaction. Being comfortable, you know, having a site, I'm good, I'm fine. I need to, no, you need to continue to add to sites, okay. If you are supporting your own, great. If you're offering services and maintenance for other people, fantastic. But keep in mind that you can offer that as a service with people. Site owners are busy. Business owners are busy. Maybe you should blog for them. Maybe you outsource that. You find a copywriter. Um, Jen Miller, who's here, she's speaking right now in the other room. Uh, she does that. You know, so I use, she's actually, uh, we refer work to each other all the time. So team up with people. Don't be afraid of the 90 million people. Okay, so, all right. Um, lastly, ah, that's it, I think. Uh, oh, oh that's, we don't want to talk about that. Okay, Q&A. Uh, you can contact me here. I am more than happy to share anything I just talked about. 
Um, and if you want to listen to the podcast or send questions in, by all means, that's awesome. And uh, yeah, I think that's it. So Q and A. Any questions? We have some. Wait, what? Ten minutes. Cool. Or forward one side. Okay. <laughs> Actually, I'll tell you one last thing. Uh, okay. You have 15 minutes. Okay, I have 15 minutes. And, uh, and uh, I'm, I'm the MC for this room, and I'm supposed to remind everybody that Adam will also be answering questions over at the Happy Bar. I will. You will. I, I think it's the other Adam. Clearly, the other Adam. There's like two other Adams here too. Okay. Yeah, no. It's fine. I'll be there too. That's fine. <laughs> yes. Yeah. You know me well. <laughs> um, the other thing I was to say was. So I actually, I will share this with you. Um, I have all five subjects. Um, I want to be careful how I want to say this. Huh. So from my pipe drive, from my emails that go out, I have shared the subject lines that I use, all five, on Kitchen Sinks WP's website. I'll share that out with you. There also is the content of those emails available in another format, but I can't say how that's delivered in this case on stage here. So you want to ask me about that content, ask me after this talk. Does that make sense? Okay. Yes, I'm going to back there to the question. Yes. Oh. Only if you're going to use it. I mean, truthfully, if, here's the thing. So I just did an episode of my podcast that came out this past Monday. It was my tax review, 2017 uh, financial review about my taxes. I'm, I didn't say exactly what I made or didn't make, but I'm fairly transparent in my show. Uh, and, my, and what I share with the community at whole. I will tell you this, for the first time in 20 years that I've been on and off of my own businesses, I posted a profit to the US government, which is weird. You know, typically you run a business, you kind of want to run pretty lean, you show a lot of your expenses, your income, but if you show a loss for too many years, technically, you're a hobby, right? So this year, I actually showed a profit. I w <laughs> and I got a refund. <laughs> How is that possible? I have three kids. It was awesome. So the, the, the child credits, I need more kids. No, I don't. The, 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 the credits, the move across the country, and my wife and I both had new careers last year. So my wife started a new career. It's why we moved to Raleigh, uh, to Cary. She's a flight attendant for JetBlue. I fly for free. You don't. Um, <laughs> so it's awesome. Um, so she had no, she had a, she took a major pay cut. She worked for a nonprofit. Nonprofit, by the way, it just means a company that, that reports nonprofitable. It's a, it's a classification for taxes doesn't mean they don't make money. So if you come across somebody who's a nonprofit who wants you to build a site for them, charge them money. Uh, if, they, if they don't offer a discount from the get-go, wait till they ask. If they ask, start with 5%. Don't go to 20. It's ridiculous. Okay, just, I've, I've gone through this before. 5%, it's fair. You still have to do what you have to do. If you want to give away an add-on domain for some hosting, maybe, but don't, don't discount your time, times like we've talked about before. Um, as far as the, serve, oh, the, the money thing, I did my taxes, and I realized that I wasted $1,000 at, at a bare minimum last year for services I was paying for monthly that I didn't use. I was trying out ConvertKit, because it's a free 30-day trial. I was trying out Ad Espresso for Facebook ads. I did the trials, and I'm like, yeah, it went to the, went to the full price. I'm like, yeah, I'll keep it. For, it's, it's okay. I'll keep it. I'm going to come back and do this more. Did I after 30 days, 60 days? No. Did I cancel in time? Did I cancel when I should have? No. Over a thousand bucks, easy, wasted. So if you're gonna do some, you can can't, try it for the 30 days, 0%, right? Cancel it, put a calendar reminder for one. For two, if you wanna come back to it, cancel it, fine. If you wanna come back, redo it, just go back. You may not get the free trial again, but you can always re-up, right? So I don't consider them expenses, I consider those things investments, if you use them properly. Hootsuite, um, well, I mean, Hootsuite's what, 50 for 10 accounts. No, it's not. Is that what it is now? I recently went to Hootsuite to check something out. I have three social media accounts connected. I want a fourth. I'm like, but now they want like $50 a month. That's not worth it to me. I'll just log into Twitter the other way, you know, the, the old fashioned way. Um, so I pay for AWeber, but I'm also fortunate. I pay for AWeber and I get an affiliate through AWeber. So it's almost a wash, literally. Uh, that works out pretty well. Um, I'm also fortunate that I don't pay for hosting at, at all. And I only say this to share with you that I did a story about hosting and my, my, journey, my web journey, web hosting journey. Any company that I have right now that I have free hosting through, I would pay for. Hosting, you get what you pay for, and it's about relationships and support. I know the people who work at these companies, at those hosting companies in question, and every year when it comes up, when my, because it comes up every year, hey, you're coming up renewal, we need a credit card on file. There's no credit card on file because they gave me an account. 
I say, I'll, I'll reach out to Corey from A2 Hosting. I'm like, hey, Corey, my thing's coming up. Um, can I have another year or do you need me to pay? If he needs me to pay, fine. It's an investment. They've helped me for years now. But again, because I have the podcast, because I have an audience, because I speak, they, like the, they give me an account. I share with them. But I, but I, I like the, all three of these companies. I use A2 Hosting, SiteGround, and, and um, WP Engine. Okay, so, um, you know, and there are other good companies too. I mean, there's um, an honest host, which is Josh's, Josh, Joshua Knapp. He's in California. He does it, you know, almost, he's trying to build that business. He's, a, he's great for support. I um, uh, can't think of the other company I use. Oh, Liquid Web, coming up, getting better. I know, I know the team over there. I know Corey Miller as well. So, again, it's investments in what you need. And then you have to make sure you use it. If you're not using it enough, cut it. It's not worth it. Any other questions? Do, do you have any uh, tools or comments specific to nonprofits? Uh, um, such as? Uh, like I would like to have uh, like a mailing list for a nonprofit oh. where that they could uh, be sent a quote of the day or something like that. So you want to reach out to them? Uh, I want them to sign up on the site. Oh. What's the value to them? A quote of the day. Okay. <laughs> I see what you do there. All right. So you want them to sign up to, be, to get a quote of the day, like just like a, like a, like a quote from like a, a Kennedy or just something, yes. a, posit, a positive reinforcement? Yes. Huh, that's a tough one. I mean, I'm honest. I don't know it all. I know a lot. I don't know it all. I'd have to think about that. The key for anything else is you want to provide value to any customer or client, right? Provide honest value and be honest. Um, like other people have said, uh, and I, I've said it uh, many, many times, people do business with people they know, like, and trust. Build that. And if it's not the right fit, you also need to stand up for yourself. Walk away. I just walked away from a client after eight months of hand-holding. So uh, what I want to, I need to come up with a shirt. It's going to say, websites, 50 bucks. Client, client hand-holding, $5,000. <laughs> <laughs> client communications, 5K. Because, you know, um, also, Bridget mentioned you know, in the keynote, hourly work versus you know, yeah, value-based pricing. Price accordingly you know, and stand up for yourself. Um, I'll tell you, if you guys want to hear the other story about the client I walked away from, you have to, saying no is awesome. You may not want to because you're like, oh, I can really use this job. It's, it's going to take me X time. It's, it's a quick $1,000. Bullshit. <laughs> it's, it's not a quick 1000 Those clients oftentimes are more headache than the $10,000 client. And what, here's, go. Here's, here's what's the difference between a $10,000 project in a fifteen hundred dollar project, besides the math, nothing. The price we we value, well, the, the, how we value our, our, ourselves, it's completely arbitrary. What do you think you can get? Now, if you say it's going to be fifteen thousand dollars, you have to be able to deliver it. You have the team in place. Yes, we can do this, right? You don't want to say I can build this, custom everything in an app, and then not be able to do it. I've seen people do that, and they burn through money, and then it goes to court. It's not good. Um, but it's arbitrary. The number we say, we say, I can do a thousand dollar site, single page. I can do this for five thousand, ten thousand. It's what you and what do you need to live on as well? You know, your expense. Everyone's life is different. So, you know, if you are seventeen years old, living at home in high school, you want to build a site in a weekend for five hundred bucks. I hate you. No, <laughs> but you know, there's it's you know, but if you're trying to make a living and support three kids, then you know your base price might be forty five hundred dollars. Even though it might take me, it might take us a day or two. You know, it just doesn't. It just you have to know that. Don't, don't use a fake email address and see what other people are pricing, you know, and say, hey, I might need a website. <laughs> yeah, it's not pretty. All right. Um, anyways, anything else, question-wise? Mm -hmm. um, the last survey was, I think it was like $27 an hour Nation, nationwide. It's low, in my opinion. Here's the problem. So, no, I think it's less. It's, it's a lot less. So here's the, here's the problem. WordPress is 15 years old. I'll tell this last little story. When WordPress started, it was easy and free. Remember that? Easy and free. Well, I mean, if you don't remember it, that's how it was pitched. Easy, free to blog. And all it was was a blog. It was WordPress. So if you had a, if you had a site, nike.com forward slash WordPress forward slash blog. I use Nike because they're older than WordPress. So you had to have it in a directory. It had to be blog. That's what it was. It was a blog only. There was no custom post types, no themes, no plugins. Really? It was blog which is short for web log, like a diary. Okay. Over, over the next couple of years, things changed. We lost the WordPress directory. It could just be nike.com forward slash blog. Fantastic. Eventually, we got to the point where it just became nike.com. It could be WordPress. It's not. Um, it doesn't have to have a blog at all. You, don't need it. you can actually have it be a, just a landing page and have the blog be the latest news. Call it what you want. Those first years, things were simple. Five-minute install, set up a blog, you're good to go. 
So WordPress was known as a blogging platform, right? Drupal was known as a developer platform. The learning curve for WordPress was simple. There wasn't much you could do with it. In those years three, four, five, once we had custom post types, themes, and plugins, the learning curve went up real quick. You had to hire people like some of us, like me. People, you know, I can't do it. And they got a bad taste in their mouth. So what they do? They left WordPress. They went to where? Wix, Weebly, and eventually Squarespace, because those were easy. Okay? And I used to be like, oh, so yeah, same thing. I take the high road now. And in the back of my head, my eyes are just rolling. No, I'm kidding. Um, but then since that time, in the last, let's say since uh, in the last five years, once we got page builders, which were also totally looked down upon early on from developers. I'm not a pure developer. I'm not a pure designer. But developers are like, oh, you're using a page builder? That's crap. Well, some of them are crap. Um, I'm not a fan of, um, I don't want to say its name. So, uh, huh? Well, no, Divi's fine. Uh, so I use Beaver Builder now. Divi's fine. I, went, I met the guys at Beaver Builder at Cabo Press at a conference. Going to a conference, by the way, for WordPress in Cabo, totally worth it. All right. <laughs> yes, dear, I have to go to this business conference. No. Uh, anyway, um, it was uh, Visual Composer. Yeah, just, uh, I'm not a fan. Just not a fan. It's just, it, because when it started, it was slow. Aveda, the theme, the most popular theme out there from Theme Forest, not a fan. It's bloated, right? So what, we used to get a, sites from clients with Aveda. We would just go into core and rip stuff out. We don't need 16 uh, sliders in there. We just don't. So the key, I have no idea where I was going with this. What was the original question? Page builders? Huh? Oh, price. Price. Thank you. So um, hiring people, because it was free and easy, people thought it was free and cheap. It's not. I charge 120 an hour when I do hourly work. I don't do much of it, but I charge 120 an hour, and I have no problems with it. I have such an awkward moment sometimes. And when asking for people to pay us is also weird, right? It's a mindset. I was on a Facebook group la two weeks ago, um, Mac Power Users. Some of them, we're a lot of Mac people here. It's a podcast I love. David Sparks, he's, a, uh, he's been on my show. Someone posted uh, they needed help with their website. Um, they're using Beaver Builder Lite. They're using a the theme that they found. I'm not sure what it was. Um, they said, I need some help. There's some things that aren't lining up. So I typed, chimed in. I could help. I, I was procrastinating. I had work to do. I had no interest in doing what I had to do. So I'm like, I'll help this guy. Wasn't expecting to get paid at all. It really wasn't. I was like, I'm just going to be a nice guy. Huge mistake. No. I mean, in general, don't make this a, a consistent habit. Um, so I reached out. He sent me information. Right away, he sends me logins. Well, we never talked. I'm like, wow, wow, it's weird. It sends me, like, via email, sends me logins. I'm like, okay. So I look at it. It takes me literally about 15, 20 minutes to figure out what's going on. And I fix the problem, some CSS. But then I realized the fix caused some other stuff on styling on the other subpages. So that took me another 15 minutes. He, I said, it's all done. He said, great. Uh, total time, hour. He said, send me a bill. Ooh, we never talked about price. It's awkward, isn't it? It's like, well, I don't want to shock the guy, though he's a lawyer. <laughs> so I called, so w w how do you solve the problem? Communication is key. Setting clear expectations, uh, something I forgot to do, and being clear and communicating with clients is key. That's my number one rule right now. And my and people who I employ. I called him with a phone call. Old fashioned, made a phone call. Like, hey Mark, I think that's his name. Uh, go with that. Hey Mark. It's Adam Silver, uh, the web guy you sent your credentials to. I logged in, and it's all fixed. I just, uh, he, he, please give me a call back. He calls me back, we talk. Um, I said, I, you said send you an invoice, which is great. I didn't say I wasn't going to. <laughs> now he, he's offered to pay me, which he should have, and I should have said something. But we never talked about price. I just did the work. So I said, I don't want to shock you, because this has happened in the past with other people. I didn't say this. And I said, my hourly fee is $120 an hour. It was just, it was just shy of an hour. He's like, no problem. That's the key. Have a phone call, have a communication with people, value yourself appropriately. You know, could I have done it for less? If he was shocked, I would have said, I would have honestly said, well, it, had he said, oh my God, I'm like, well, I could do it. You couldn't. What do you, what do you feel the value is? I would have said, what do you think the value is? And pay me that. And lesson learned, ideally, next, before you do work, discuss that first. So, yeah. So, of course, of course. So anyway, all right, that's my time. Thanks. Thanks.